Hey TJ, there's a guitar show in Indianapolis up the road. You want to go? Holy cow, yeah! Oh my god! <laughs> Okay, here we go inside of this uh, this really cool guitar show. Sorry for some of the bad film work here. I'm trying to uh, pick up this guitar, so that was an old parlor right there. I'm not can't remember for sure what it was, but it might have been an early Martin Gibson 12 string over there as well. Again, sorry for some of the uh, shaky video. We've got a uh, that's an Electar Epiphone. Kind of an early lap steel there. Uh, looks like a Les Paul Supreme. I've owned one of those Supremes before. They wanted $65.50 for that one. And there is a real historical relic. That uh, Rickenbacker frying pan right there from 1934 or 35. Very early guitar. That belongs in a museum. Ugly ass reverse V. Got a bunch of uh, cool strats here in this show. As we go around, you'll see more of those. Again, sorry for some of the frenetic pacing here of some of the video. I'm trying to get to all of this. We got there kind of late in the afternoon. Uh, bl cool Blackface Deluxe Reverb. couple of those there, looks like. Uh, national guitar from the late 50s, early 60s. I think that's a wooden one, not a Rezzo glass. So that would be what, late 50s. Uh, cool SJ Gibson back there. Uh, that would be uh, from the early 50s, probably. This was an interesting bass. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's uh, some kind of prototype. The The note says it's a prototype for Danny Gatton. I guess he did some bass work on some of his, al his own albums, and this was produced for him. $7,200 for that, and it was owned by him personally. I had a chance to buy one of his amps at one point. It was a late 60s uh, Silverface Fender. I think it was a twin reverb, if I recall correctly. Still kicking myself about not buying that. This, I'm not, I think this is an actual 50s uh, Les Paul right there, just sitting there on the table. I believe that's a, you know, 58 to 1960, probably in a, probably a 59 or 60, judging by the tiger striping. I didn't look at it too closely. I mean, kind of what's the point, you know? I'm not going to be picking it up or anything. You'll see that Gibson SG right there, that 64 SG on the left. I've had exactly that guitar with a Bigsby on it that was put on at the factory. I think that might actually be my old guitar right there. They want eight grand for it. I sold it back in, uh, I don't know, about five years ago, six years ago for like 4,000. So they're wanting double the money. And if it's not the same one, it's a spitting image of the one that I had. Really, really great guitar. I loved the P90s in that thing. Not sure what that classical is. It kind of caught my eye for 175 bucks. But look at that old Vox right there. I guess it's Crucianelli probably factory. They want two grand for that thing. And this is an interesting guitar. I've never seen one before. A, a, a Melita Custom. I don't think I've ever seen one before for 4,500 bucks. But look at the look at the horns on that. The scroll work. Kind of a German carve on the top as well. Really cool guitar. Uh, there was an Ampeg guitar, that T-Style. <clears throat> 57 Les Paul Jr. for eight grand. I just, I, you know, even if it's a 50s uh, Gibson, I just could not see myself spending that kind of money on a single pickup guitar. I don't know why. I, just not my style, I guess. 
I like the neck pickup too much. There's a Gretsch Fury poking through right there, that, that head. And a K3 pickup guitar we just passed by. Lots of stuff to look at, man. I, and I was uh, afraid I wasn't going to get to all of it. That's why I'm kind of going at a frenetic pace here. A cool uh, old silver tone. For 650 bucks, that's a no-brainer, really, as far as I'm concerned. Those are great amps. Again, that Gretsch Fury right there. It's worth every penny of 750 in my estimation. There's a Fender head back there, too. Here's a silver tone uh, from the late 60s. This is a solid state. Probably bass amp. Uh, there's a Chet Atkins style Gretsch with the false F holes. Bunch of Les Pauls. You're gonna see a lot of Les Pauls at this show. Gretsches are a little bit hard to get used to if you're not uh, used to playing them. They're, you know, they're, they can be a bit bulky different sound as well that's a uh, cool lap steel there it's a Valco made lap steel and there's a J50 Gibson for 1795 that's a round or excuse me a slope shoulder or not a slope shoulder square shoulder excuse me there's a uh, that's a Gene Autry silver tone and also a shark fin two pickup guitar to a Tysco definitely some cool stuff here and again the frenetic pace that I'm taking here is just because I wanted to try to get through all this we arrived a bit late in the day and uh, there was only about an hour of the show left before everything was supposed to start closing up and I just wanted to make sure I got to everything and got to at least look at what all was here that's a 65 what is that a, is that a 330 cool guitar it's another uh, 60s uh, uh, ES double neck fender. I've had one of those fairly recently. I picked up at a antique store and made some good money on it. Reselling it. Yeah, again, sorry with the shaky video. Um, just kind of doing my best to get to all of it. And I didn't want to go all the way down the aisle and have to walk all the way back. There's one of those VW guitars, those first acts. Everybody who bought a Volkswagen was selling those guitars that came with those. <laughs> I think it was, yeah, they ended up were selling them for like a hundred bucks. Some of those are, some of those first acts were pretty good though. Now here's a cool one, a GA70. Nine, I believe this is a late 60s one. This has got to be one of the latest ones ever produced. Look at the the style of covering on it, the black covering. That screams late 60s to me. Uh, probably 1967, 68, somewhere in there. I think maybe early 68, according to the speakers. If we get a look at the speakers there. 137, so that's a CTS speakers. Uh, 608, so that's 1966, excuse me. Uh, but still with that black covering that's a very late ga 79 i'm not sure when they made those up until but uh that's a later one so according to the gibson amps book by wally marks jr the ga 79 rvt was produced until the end of the gibson amplifier kalamazoo production run it began in tweed covering and it went all the way through the charcoal covering during the Crestline series and even into the textured black covering of the 1965 and 66 series. And even a few were produced into 1967. Uh, you can see the production totals there, very, very few. This is one of 56 that were produced in 1966. Very rare amp. That has to be toward the end of the run of those. Very rare to see one that's that late. Usually you see them from the early 60s. Some kind of cool custom guitars over here on this bench. There's a, uh, that one, blue one caught my eye because I've owned one of those before. That's a Warrior guitar. You can tell by the deep carve on the top there. A lot of times they will do some really intricate inlays and everything too. Kind of a P50 
PRS style headstock with the, that goes straight to the post, the strings do. They want a $27.50 for that one. It's really worth every penny, but those are kind of a hard sell in my uh, experience just because you got to find the right guy that knows what they are and how good they are. Those really are nice guitars, those Warriors. There was a, a Blue Burst Fender back there. Was that a Plus? I think it might have been a Fender Strat Plus from the 90s. one of those newer uh, green Les Pauls, what they call those evergreen top or something like that. I can't remember for sure. <clears throat> nice deluxe there on the floor and there's the coolest Les Paul of all at the whole show in my opinion. Maybe besides that 50s one. This uh, Les Paul amp is probably from the what about 54, 55 somewhere in there. It's one of the earlier Les Paul amps. It's got the original Jensen speaker. Just those are really, really sweet, cool amps. And I only see their value continuing to hold steady or go up over time just because um, of, of what they are. And they didn't make a lot of them. There's a, a Falcon peeking out under there for 350 bucks. It's the price is kind of right the more I looked at it the cabinet was a little bit messed up uh, and I ended up picking up that amp right there from the guy I started talking to him he was a fan of the channel and we talked for a little bit and I found out that that was his amp and uh, we struck a deal on it and we may show it at the end of this video or maybe in another video we'll see again a black face deluxe not a deluxe reverb. You don't see a whole lot of those. Uh, there was an early 70s uh, Les Paul right there. That custom. I didn't see how much they were wanting for it, but those are cool guitars if you can get them for... I used to pick those up around, God, $1,800 to, to $2,000. Those early 70s sandwich Pauls like that. And they're always, always really just great guitars in my experience that good pickups in them uh, but that one right there I think is a 76 because that's the anniversary if you see it on the uh, 12th fret there yeah see that that's the 20th anniversary Les Paul so whatever that would be of the custom <clears throat> lots of newer guitars down toward this end of the table Nice ones though. There's an old Princeton, Blackface Princeton. That would be a nice one to have, a 64. Can't go wrong with a Blackface Princeton for sure. There's a, is that a Deluxe Reverb there? Silver Face, you can't go wrong with those either. Or was that a Vibrolux? And then we've got a, a Baseman right there. That's one of the Baseman heads that has the, uh, that has the presence control, excuse me, the presence control on it. I've got one of those right now that needs service. We may show in a future video. Onto the mic and accessories table here. I like that little case. Yeah, I'm just kind of going through all this stuff. I'm, you know, I was afraid I wasn't going to get to all of it. Um, so I'm not spending a whole lot of time on each thing, but I'm trying to get to everything that I could see. There's a cool old Turner mic. They made some really stylish, cool looking mics. And they were high quality as well for their time. Uh, there's an Electro Voice, that, that's a ribbon mic. Probably from the 50s if I had to guess. And here in a bit we're gonna catch back up with TJ. He's up here talking to one of his buddies at uh, at a bass booth and uh yeah we'll hang out with tj here just a little bit okay yesterday we came and set up i went back to the room with cool the uh we were still in bed by 10 o'clock cool old uh, <laughs> prince <laughs> telecaster <laughs> replica there on that table but i don't know hey, how you like that. <laughs> yeah we had a little bit that was rough. well i have to say though hey. you don't look near as rough as him uh, <laughs> but then I know what he looks like. Normally, so. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm feeling it on the inside. Believe me, Fred. Yeah. 
This is Brian. Hey, nice, nice to meet you. Meet you. Nice to meet you, Brian. Nice. Look at this. 76. This might be the heaviest thing in, in the universe. Oh my god. Right here, let me hold it. Look what they did to the bridge. Yeah. To get that thing in oh, there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Here, you got it? Yep. Okay. This is the stuff Brian makes. These here. The low end stuff. This one and that orange one. Mash. And the orange one back there? Yeah, the orange one's a low end as well. No, it's no, I didn't play that one. Oh, sorry. See these, uh, this guy with this old um, like jazz master pickups he's got, like out of an old jazz master. Uh -huh. Hi. Hi there. We'll take one of these, is that all right? That is absolutely fine. Maybe if you blow them, we'll fix them. <laughs> Cool. Okay. Yeah, just check it out. That's yeah, okay. Got a pair. Okay. Yep, those are nice. And that one's older one too. Yeah. Cool. Old Utah. This is just the demo speaker. You want to see the demo speaker? Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, this is like, a lot of people don't know what the inside of it looks like. This is not what lead wires would look like in the end. Yeah, you know? sure. But there you got your coil, mm -hmm. your spider, your cone, lead wires, your magnet, your magnet pole visible. Just kind of giving people an idea of what we do. Yeah. Well, thank you. Mark Christopher from Hippie Picks with the world's one and only Arrowhead shaped guitar pick. No other guitar pick company in the world makes Arrowhead shaped guitar picks, and especially with this material. What is the material? Proprietary blend is what Mr. Kevin from Pedal Python tells me to say. That's it's probably a good idea. Blend. Yeah, no, so I designed the world's one and only Arrowhead shaped guitar pick by accident. Okay. Thought somebody's had to do this before. I'm not the first person to think of it. And I was, apparently. So I called some lawyers, got the patent, got it all trademarked, got it squared away, and now Were I Were you making picks already? Like just, or? Yes, I started making them out of wood. Okay. Yeah, so I, basically, what had happened, long story short, is I made um, a guitar pick for uh, my buddy for Christmas out of wood. I was like, oh, I'll make him one, I'll uh -huh. try. It was okay, it was decent. But then like a year and a half later, I decide I'm gonna try and make some more. That was fun. Yeah. You know, so I started making them. I put some photos up online and everybody started wanting wooden guitar picks. And I was like, no, I wasn't planning on selling these. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Here we go. So one day I'm making them and I accidentally cut too far in on one side. And I was like, I could possibly redeem this, maybe, you know? So I'm working on the other side and I cut almost identical too far. And I was so mad. I was like, oh, it's a wasted pick. And I threw it. I threw it on the ground and I started working on another pick and I kept looking and I almost picked it up and just threw it in the trash, to be uh, honest. Right. But I kept going, it kind of looks, well, it kind of looks like an arrowhead. So I decided to make an arrowhead pick. And 
I became the world's one and only arrowhead shaped guitar pick maker. You absolutely are. Yes. And how much are they? And These where can you find them? These are $5 a piece. And they, they, people go, well, it's kind of expensive for a pick, buddy. I spend a nickel on 100. I'll lose picks. Yes. Well, one, I doubt you'll lose the world's one and only arrowhead shaped guitar pick because it's awesome. You drop it on the ground, you still see it because it's super white. Right. Also, I hand make every single one of these by hand. No fancy machine. You hand make them by hand? Hand make them by hand. That's amazing. Both hands. Okay, the only very thing good. I don't do, the only thing I don't do is so the, the logo mm. is I have a die cast, so I arbor press the logo in there and my wife paints the red and black logos. Oh very good. Because I'm not very good at that. She's got it down she to the down. side. That's right. So give her props. She's awesome. She's awesome. Yes. Excellent. And then yeah, so you know my these are hippie picks. Right? Okay. And the, the motto is to be a hippie. Fantastic. So it is. What are these ones? Oh, these are the new hip three. Same material. And you say, well, that looks like a jazz three. Yes, but I don't own the jazz three name. So these are the hip three jazz style, I have to say. Yeah, these are the same material as this, but they come in black with white logos. These are available at 1.5. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, back to uh, looking at some more stuff here. We've got a lot of, uh, like I said, just a lot of stuff. Accessories, some uh, Telecaster pick guards, just things like that, strings. Some really cool necks right there. I didn't catch the make on these necks, but they look pretty good to me. Um, they look, look well made. Some kind of neat little lamp and this was uh, one of the coolest finds of the day I thought this maestro fuzz tone you don't see a whole lot of those around left anymore not sure what that little pedal was but they wanted a thousand dollars for this thing I don't know maybe it's worth it um, they are pretty rare original ones and that one was an original one. Little JCM 900 right there with a foot pedal, 800 bucks. Uh, I thought these guitars right here were pretty interesting. Uh, they look really well made. I didn't catch the price points on these, but Frasier? Frasier guitars. I really like uh, what they did with the finishes on these. You can see like the really deep checking and everything. It's just really well done. You don't see a lot of, um, you know, kind of aged guitars that are that well done with all the finish checking looking correct and everything. You know, if that's your thing, if you like a, an older look, kind of a worn in aged feel, these definitely had the appearance of, of quality. I didn't pick one up, but they were nice looking guitars. I'm trying to be on the lookout for stuff that I might have missed while I was there in person. You know, like I said, I was kind of going through this hurriedly. Uh, it was kind of toward the end of the day, so I wanted to get it all in. There was a cool tooled pick, a leather pick guard on these. These were these guys' personal builds. Uh, the only thing I did not like about these was the the hardware. I thought he could have done a little better on the hardware. I do like the look of um, that brass, but the, uh, you know that's just kind of a cheap hardware. But the bodies and stuff looked well done. Really, and that A style pick, um, excuse me, strap right there. Uh, there's a couple of those. They were really big. They they couldn't have been actually old. I don't think because they were too wide to have been vintage, but they were really cool looking. I've never seen any uh, jacquard weave, you know, hootenanny style straps like that, um, that were that wide. Dude had some uh, cool metal up your ass. <laughs> had some cool vinyl there. Some old magazines, old guitar player magazines. I've got a few old guitar player magazines laying around here and there. 
I don't know what they were asking on these, but back issues that are that old, um, can, some of them can be kind of collectible. A uh, nice super reverb there. Probably early 70s. Thousand bucks? I mean, you know. Not too bad. They're not going to get any cheaper, I can guarantee you that. You know, they're not making any more of them. There was a, a silver, uh, silver Burst Les Paul custom. Probably an early 80s one. That was an actual early 80s one. This dude using a Supro as a uh, stool. I <laughs> thought was kind of sacrilegious. Very cool Supro head, though. Uh, I know for a fact that thing right there will rock. Very, very cool. What was it? A Taurus? It's a Taurus, yeah. I forget what the uh, model number on S S something. And what's he sitting on there also? A uh, old Fender Reverb tank? Reverb unit, I mean. Some cool amps uh, down under the table there. Um, just kind of hard to see and get to. Really, when you're doing it one-handed. There's a Ventures Moserite. I'm not sure if that was an... I guess that must be an original one. Bass. Original bass. Fender bass there for 800 bucks. Just tr trying to peek in where I can here. I'm sorry again, you know, it's kind of hard to do this one-handed filming and and everything uh, to really get a good look at everything there's a Mesa Mark 1 it looked like down there old Kalamazoo bass what was that a bass 30 amp a, a music master bass amp those can be really cool they can sound great for guitar as well there's a harmony that one would be sound projects made um, out of Cicero, Illinois. This dude looking to get himself into trouble there with that Mark I. <laughs> I probably should have warned him. Not sure what that is right there. What is that? Uh, is that a... With that really deep carve on that. Did I get a shot of the headstock of that guitar there sitting up front? I don't guess I did, did I? Not sure what that was, but cool guitar. There's a Howard Roberts style um, Ibanez copy back there. Sounding good? Hi. And of course, you guys know me. I couldn't uh, not spot the box of tubes down here. A couple little boxes. They look like they probably came from a TV repair guy because most of them were stuff that you wouldn't use as a guitarist. A little sleeve of, almost as a whole sleeve of some Westinghouse tubes there. I'm not sure what, the, what they were. Uh, this is a cool Kent guitar. 12 string. I've owned one of those in the past. They are really, really cool guitars, man. Once you get those set up, um, nice pickups, nice players. They have... Uh, Brazilian rosewood fretboards. You know, a lot of people kind of thumb their noses at those old 60s Japanese guitars, but that was one of the better made ones. I'm trying to get it to focus on the price tag on that. Would they want $550 for it? Oh, it's a Mexican. It's a Mexican strat. Ooh, the serial number was rubbed off too. That's usually not a good sign. It's an old Harmony. wonder what's in that case all tied up and disheveled. Another Gibson ES. There were a lot of Gibson uh, ES style guitars at this show. What was that, an 81? Yeah. 
Sounds about right. Five grand for an 81 ES 335. Man, prices are really a lot different than they were just not even 10 years ago. You know, you probably could have gotten that ES for three thousand maybe twenty five hundred to three thousand would have been my guess max you know ten years ago and I don't know if you look hard enough you can probably still get one at that somewhere but that's the trick to find that stuff 250 bucks for an old airline reel to reel I've got probably about 30 of those reel to reel tape recorders from this sort of vintage and they all usually have uh, tube amps in them that's why I buy them up just because you know if I don't restore them I can always uh, convert them <laughs> into a tube amp yeah some, some kind of cool custom uh, guitars over here what were these these were uh Rodenbeck boutique guitars. I don't know. I, I thought a couple of them had a nice, distinctive appeal. There's that one with that sound hole. Maybe that one is a uh, sort of an electric acoustic. Not sure on that. They've got the actual Fender style uh, headstocks, so either. Either he's paying the licensing fees. There's uh, some of those shallower uh, round tuners, tuner buttons like I like. I've never actually tried the shallers. They look a little bit small to me. Um, but the ones I have on my telly that are circular work out really well. They're a prototype somebody sent me. I've always had people ask me about those and I never can show them cool super reverb there because I signed an NDA with the guy who made them uh, very cool Gibson amp right here he wanted what 1500 bucks for that thing Oh, no, 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 I'm just taking these on. Let's see. Just don't take my picture. Still too early in the day for my picture. That's nice. You don't see too many of those Gibson Reverb units. Do you mind if I uh, take a look at the back of it? see these around every day anymore. I don't think you ever did. I'm trying to find a case for this guitar. They probably didn't make more than a couple hundred of these. No. Mm. Thank you. I have a YouTube channel. No, uh, I'm from Louisville. I'm from Louisville. Mm -hmm. I'm called the guitologist. I'll be right back. You got the amp and case with these T15s? Did you used to have one of those? Huh? One of those amp in the case boxes? Yeah, I've had some of those. 
Kappa is cool. What model is the Kappa? Is that a single pickup or? Kappa? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, I see it. They're all pretty much that uh, Kappa Continental series. Right. You could help. Mm. I could help. Congratulations. What is it? Yeah, thanks. It's, uh, I think, uh, the guy that did the conversion on its Bulldog something, and uh, it was like a standard, and he reshaped a bunch of stuff on it and did a bunch of different things to it to make it more like a 59. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it's, it's cool that, you know, refan. Did he do the age aging and all that on the yep. finish? Yep, look at the top part. Yeah, I can see it. Definitely okay. different. Mm-hmm. Just like the vintage one from the back of the body. Is. Yeah. See? It's had quite a bit done, but... It's, it's pretty cool. That's really cool. My friend Joey hired one of those as his manager. Well, I'm going to buy that amp from you. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you want to set it aside. That's old school. Shit. Forties. That's an old... Uh, Wyman Keystone, yep. Had one of their guitars once. Here you go. You know what? I have met too many people. Yeah, I think I'm quite The business. How you doing, man? Oh, thanks, man. Where are you from? Louisville. Louisville. Yeah. Nashville. Awesome. Looking at some case candy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got a lot of guitars here. We got some music. This is Steve Scarfana from Mario Speedwagon. How you doing, man? Dog. Got some of this Gone. music here. We got a nice little resophonic new. It's In the a 1932. Holy cow. Ukulele. Sounds awesome. This is uh, 1932. How you like that? I. I can speak. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Oh, <laughs> oh, definitely. It's seen a fire <laughs> one day, but we yeah. restored it. Brought oh, we it back restored to life. it. And. Uh, and uh, Got some vintage microphones over here, and a nice little. Yeah, this what do you What are you asking on your the electric voice? On the electric voice, I, you know, four hundred bucks. Well, that that's like a ribbon microphone. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. We dropped it and kind of bent the frame a little bit, so. Three ninety nine. I'm not sure it what you should ask yeah. for. See, it's a little, a little bend little. right here, but you got the original stand to it. You can turn it, it'll pop out. I'm not going to do that. Switch and everything works great. Easily run five, six hundred dollars. So I got to Does it work? Three ninety nine. We can plug it in. Oh, did you, did you bring this plug? Oh, you don't have to go through the trouble. I'm just asking. I didn't bring a. I, I have met work. too many EVs that have worked. Yeah, and, and I. I Quite sure it does work. Yeah, it's in working order. Oh, sorry. And um, then we got an electric voice model 641, great harmonica guitar. I mean, a harmonica microphone. EV made up in yep, Michigan. I like the Turner. And then you got the Turner right there. The full switch on, nice harmonica one there too. Wanted to get a second look at this. It's really cool that this had the uh, Indiana Music Company, Indianapolis, kind of local history uh, there. I love it when amps have tags like that. It just gives it a little bit more interest. 
Um, I did end up buying this Falcon off the guy for 250 bucks. Uh, not bad for a Falcon. You can see the holes in the top of the chassis. I'm missing the uh, logo. The logo will run me about probably 35, 40 bucks uh, to get one. Uh, it's missing the back door, but he's got a piece of wood there. I'll probably spray paint that black. It's got a Weber uh, DT12 speaker in it. Uh, that's a ceramic magnet. Original foot switch and also what appeared to be the original uh, tubes, RCA right. tubes. Thank you. Appreciate it. No problem, buddy. Take care. Yeah, tune in and you'll see it one day. I'm not... I won't be able to get to it right away, but yeah, it'll... Yeah, because you got a mound of stuff oh, still. Oh, dude, I got... Yeah, <laughs> mountains, plural. This guy's a damn person. Yeah, right over the receipt, so you can get out of here. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you a, give you a receipt for that, too. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put that in the car. Here we go. Um, oh, should I do it on this? We'll no, get it. Fine. We'll, we'll take it in a minute. Anything. As long as they have a thing. Is it about to that's close? Or are we closing now? Uh, it's six. I don't know. Is it? Oh, I didn't see these. No, there's still some time. Did you see this? Hey, Teach. Yeah. Did you see this? Yeah, oh, yeah. There's their 76 right there. P base. Yeah. That one's not bad. That one's heavy. That's heavy. a brick. Yeah. I'm just noticing that little uh, Supro right there, that little Supro lap steel. Um, that would be a really cool buy if you could get it cheap enough because it's got the, it's got one of those really cool old pickups in it. You could take all the electronics out and stick in like a Tele style guitar and man, that thing would sound great. Uh, that Al Nico pickup. Thanks a lot, I appreciate you. Where was is your hotel? Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Not far, right? Yeah, you too. 20 minutes. Mitch, you hit stuff. Is it on the way back? Is it on the, is it east? Like on the way back towards, uh, where are y'all? Uh, Louisville. Oh, you are just going back home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like later. Uh, well, it's not that far. Where are you guys going? Um, where are you guys going for food? Okay. Well, send me a text. What your what? Well, Brad just bought an amp, uh, so we'll get out of here as soon as he's done getting the shots he wants. Yeah. That's awesome. I got me a warm with I got me a warm with Yeah, 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 nice. I knew some people said something about it going to a warm with that. I love it. No, no, no. Wow. Good job. I Right. I don't want to take it home. And he said, well, it hadn't got a case. I said, well, I can do that without a case. He said, stop throwing it in the gig tag. No shit. Okay. Okay. Sorry, pardon me. Uh, 15. Yeah, okay. Can I see the back of it? Okay. Uh, how do I get over there? Okay, they changed the speakers. How long have you had it? We're downsizing. Is this your personal stuff, or you have a store? No, or? Is, I played in bands. Yeah. Cool banjo too. Let's see that. 
Well, thank you. I appreciate you letting me look at it. All right, guys, that'll do it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed this road trip to the Indianapolis Guitar Show. I wanted to give a shout out and acknowledgement to the book Gibson Amplifiers 1933 to 2008 by Wallace Marks Jr. I used the information extensively throughout this video, as you could see. Uh, definitely a book worth picking up. It's got a lot of information in it. It's very thorough. It's one of the best guitar books that I've ever uh, picked up and owned. So I will put a link down in the description where you can pick up a copy for yourself. Definitely worth owning. Uh, I highly recommend it. But that'll do it for this one. And for now, we'll see y'all later.